Okay, so this is over section 5.1 uh, in your book, and it is about quadratic functions. So a quadratic function can be written in this form. This is standard form for a quadratic function. This first term is called the quadratic term, and that's because it has x raised to the second power. That makes it quadratic. The second term is called the linear term because it has x raised to the first power, which is what makes it linear. And then the last term is called the constant term because it doesn't have a variable in it, so it is constant. And any function that can be written in this form with a quadratic term first uh, is a quadratic function. Notice these two terms don't have to be here. If b or c was 0, then this ter the either of these terms would go away, and I might have something that looks like this. 2x squared, and that's it. This is still a quadratic function. This term is what is necessary in order for it to be a quadratic function. The other two terms can be there or not, but they don't have to. Okay, moving on. Example 1, classifying functions. So we want to classify these two functions. Um, I mean this, this function. We're going to have a part b, so that's why I said 2. So the first thing we need to do is write this in standard form. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out. 2x times x gives me 2x squared. 2x times 4 gives me negative 8x. 3 times x gives me 3x. And 3 times negative 4 gives me negative 12. I can simplify this middle term. 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. Okay, we have a quadratic term, so this is a quadratic function. So the first one is a quadratic function. Okay, so then this next one, again, we want to write it in standard form. So first we need to distribute the 3 to both terms. 3 times x squared gives me 3x squared. 3 times negative 2x gives me negative 6x. Now I need to distribute the negative 3 to both terms. That's negative 3x squared plus 6. So now let's combine like terms. We have 3x squared and negative 3x squared. When you combine those, you, they go away, and we're left with negative 6x plus 6. This is a linear function. There's no quadratic term, there's no x squared term, so we have a linear function. Okay, a few more things about a parabola. Um, I'm a quadratic function. The quadratic function is a parabola. Okay, so it's a type of parabola. Next thing is the axis of symmetry is the line that divides a parabola into two parts that are mirror images. So if we were to draw a line on here somewhere, okay, this divides it into two parts, but this side and this side do not look the same, okay? And it, no matter which way I slice this line, they're not going to look the same unless it is the axis of symmetry. So that's what the axis of symmetry is. So here's the axis of symmetry for this quadratic function, for this parabola, okay? Both sides look the exact same. They're mirror images. Okay, The vertex of a parabola is the point where the axis of symmetry meets the parabola. That's right here. It's also either the maximum or the minimum value of the graph at any given time. So if I had a parabola that looked like this, the vertex would be here. Okay, and That would be the maximum value of the function. In this case, the vertex is the minimum value of the function. All right, so that's moving on to example two. Example two says to identify the vertex and the axis of symmetry on the parabola. So the axis of symmetry is gonna be right here. It's this line that splits that into mirror images. And the equation for that line, so since it's a line, you have to write an equation. It's x equals two. Okay, so it goes through two. x equals two is the line, the axis of symmetry. The vertex is where the axis of symmetry meets the graph, which is right here, and the vertex is a point, and in this case it's the point 2 comma 0. So the axis of symmetry is a line, the vertex is a point. So the next step is to identify the points corresponding to P and Q. Corresponding means on the opposite side of the axis of symmetry. So I drew the axis of symmetry here, if I go to the other side, this point is 1, 2 away from the axis of symmetry. So if I go 2 to the other side, that's right here. This is the point that corresponds to Q. Okay? And this point is at 4, 8. So 4, 8. That's the point that corresponds to Q. The point that corresponds to P, this is 1 away from the axis of symmetry. If I go 1 over here, 
that's the point P that corresponds to P and that's the point 3 comma 2 so that's identifying points that are corresponding on a parabola okay the next one this is the longest part is finding a quadratic model from three points okay so for a line you only need two points to find a model but with a parabola you need three points okay so a parabola in standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and we have x and y values over here so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the first x and y values to this equation the y value is 3 don't know a the x value is 2 don't know b x value is 2 plus c now I'm gonna simplify this y equals 4a plus 2b plus c I have an equation with three variables that I got from one point now if I plug in the next one 13 for y a times x squared plus b times x so I'm plugging in 3 for x and 13 for y I get the equation this is equal to or let me write it underneath 13 equals 9a plus 3b plus c so now I have two equations let's erase this and move the other one up I have two equations with three variables from two points and I'm gonna plug in the last one 29 for y plugging it into this equation 29 for y equals a times x squared x is gonna be 4 4 squared is 16 so we'll have 16 a plus b times x 4 times x plus c so now I have a system of three equations with three variables and I can solve this to figure out what a, b, and c are. Oops, this shouldn't say 4x, that should say 4b. Three equations, three variables. I could solve this by substitution or elimination or I could do it the easy way and use a matrix. So I'm actually going to do that. Okay, so I have my matrix here. My I've augmented this matrix. I used uh, this the the coefficients from this side are the f is the first terms the three by three terms and then three thirteen twenty nine are the solutions so now I'm going to find the reduced row echelon form of a and that gives me the identity and three negative five one okay so three a is equal to three b is equal to negative five and c is equal to one put this back in full screen mode so now that I found a B and C I can plug them back into this equation and I have y is equal to a times x squared plus B which is negative 5 B is negative 5 so I could say minus 5 X plus C just one and I have a quadratic model from these three points so what you do is you take the points, you plug them into this equation for x and y, then you solve the system of equations to find a, b, and c. Okay, example four is modeling data with quadratic functions. So here I have elapsed time and water level, and this is for uh, a tank that is draining water, I believe. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these points and plug them into some software I'm gonna use GeoGebra you can do this with a calculator also okay so here we go Let's scroll up I have my data here okay and what I'm gonna do with that data is I'm gonna create a list of points create list of points and I'm gonna call the list instead of list one I'm gonna call it point point and click create okay so then if I don't need this spreadsheet anymore I don't need to see it anyway so now I have my list of points right here where's A? Oh, A is my matrix so it started on B so I have my list of points and what I want to do is I want to see a parabola so I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger the way you do it in GeoGebra is you do fit poly so if I type in fit poly fit poly it lets me fit a polynomial and I need a list of points and a degree of the polynomial well I already have a list of points up here that I called points 
So I'm just going to tell it points. And then I'm going to hit tab. And it says degree of polynomial. So the degree of my polynomial, degree means the highest exponent. So for a quadratic function, the degree is 2. And then I hit enter. And what it does is it creates the best fit parabola for that data. And you can see up here, this is the equation of that parabola. And here's the model. If I scroll, if I zoom in really close, you'll see those points aren't actually on the parabola. It's just the best fit parabola to those points. So if I came back over here and I looked at the thing and it said model the data with the quadratic function, um, here is my quadratic function, 0.01x squared minus 2.1x plus 120.33. And if it wanted to know at what time the water was going to completely run out, that would be the vertex, the minimum value of the graph. And I could figure that out by saying what is the value of of uh, x when f of x is equal to 0. So that's what I'm looking for. The relative minimum. And the vertex is going to be at the axis of symmetry. And that's gonna, it looks like it happens around uh, 120. But let's see if I can type in minimum of a function The function is going to be f. The start x value is going to be 0. The end x value is going to be 140 because it's between 0 and 140. And then I hit enter, and it shows me my minimum value is here. It's this point that it just added i at 114.74. Okay, So that's about when it equals 0. I could also plug 0 in for f of x and solve this, but we're not quite there yet. So that is Lesson 5-1.